super happy. <laughs> Look at this fat priest woman. The Dutch season is rapidly coming to an end. For three weeks the wind has been hammering our waters due to multiple storms hitting the country. This seemed to have disrupted the spring fishing in such a way that fish are just not moving shallow as we expected them to do. The past few weeks we played around with some Xander fishing against the drop offs with smaller soft baits while also using the new gravity twitch from Savage Gear. <laughs> How he took the scout shaft, it's like completely in hell. Like, say, uh. Now that the wind has calmed down, it's time to hit the shallows for that final session before I depart to Sweden. Fishing the first week with Jesper and then later on with Jakob. Good morning, everyone. For me, it's the final day of the season. I'm fishing today with Franz, but I think Franz, uh, are you gonna continue the season or is this like it's almost the end of March? The season closes, for those who don't know, it closes in the Netherlands on the 1st of April. No joke, by the way. Uh, but I'm leaving to Sweden. And I'm leaving to Sweden on the 28th of March. So, even though we're not there yet, I just arrived from Ireland. And now I only got one day of fishing left in the Netherlands. Normally I would be bummed out, but the spring season, it hasn't been great. <laughs> We've been struggling, and not me and not the other guys from White Label, but I think almost everyone in the Netherlands who's fishing on the shallows is struggling to get some pike. So the water temperature is, Jesus, 8.9 degrees. Whoa. You would expect pike to be on the shallows, but they're just not there in massive numbers, but hopefully today will change. So Franz and I are gonna hit the shallows with all kinds of jerk baits. Just a selection of what I'm gonna use. There are no hooks on it because I, like I said, I just came from Ireland fishing two days with Pierre Moyeret. He knows him, he doesn't need an introduction. But he just started off predator guiding in Ireland and he invited me to come over and uh, be his first guest and fish there in his new boat. And uh, I had a wonderful trip in Ireland and it wasn't easy. But a super cool video about that is coming up. So I just arrived in the Netherlands. My alarm went on two o'clock yesterday, went straight back into work. And now I'm out on the lake with Franz for some nice, calm Dutch spring weather. No wind, full sunburst, out on the shallows, what can happen? Telling that you yeah, we noted that Franz had with one fish following, he had one take. I had a fish following from quite a distance and just kept chasing my scout jerk bait, and it happened for a second time. But every time the fish came closer to the boat, especially because we are fishing with the sun on our backs, our shadows are quite long because the, the sun is still relatively low at the moment. And once the fish gets in like five to ten meters of the boat, it spooks off. You don't have the time to convince that fish so you want to fish a bit faster so I decided even though I can fish with the scout jerkbait relatively fast I decided to put like a small scout swimmer on it first cast and it just smashed its teeth right in here just a brand new one and the tape was like and it was on and then it just just two big thrashes and popped off it's not easy at the moment. <laughs> I think it's uh, probably goes down as one of the worst spring fishing seasons ever. I mean, not counting the pelagic fishing we did, but we'll cover that topic in another video. But <laughs> uh, the night fishing has been awesome throughout the winter and throughout spring. But the uh, I don't know, the shallows is kind of shit. Kind of, kind of similar situation as, as last year, weather-wise. 
Yeah. And we've got water temperatures going up, 9 degrees. We had 10.3 at one point. And then there are bike on the shallows. But not many and the ones we see are not super active. And, that, and if you had it for like one or two days, that would be f you know all in the game. But it has been like this for weeks now. Because we had like three weeks or even four weeks of heavy winds. Yeah, a lot that of rain. Yes. Dirty waters. Yeah, that too. Yeah. And now we have this weather now for three weeks. Calm and weather, no rain, a lot no of sun. No rain, a lot of sun. No wind. Yeah. And, and the pike are still deep. Last week we did a, a pelagic session and we caught some really, really good fish, some good zander as well. And the fish were just on the, not super, super deep, but uh, you, could, you could still see them hovering around like eight meters of water and still hunting and fat and some are fit yeah some are some have spawned yeah it, you're starting to see more and more fish that have spawned definitely but still with conditions like this just textbook spawning weather and we got a couple things on the menu for today we will be um, jerkbait fishing like we did this morning we saw a couple fish that giant that uh, still hurts we're gonna troll a bit i think that's the next plan we're gonna head out and uh, see if we can find the fish between Three and six meters, something like that. Yeah, you can fish relatively shallow. Yes, slow presentation, shallow fishing. Uh, later on, we will definitely do some more jerkbait fishing, and also doing some night fishing. And not going to do only the pelagic stuff, but we're also going to try and cast for some zander, which will be moving towards the shallow. So we got a lot of things on the menu for tonight. But first, we're going to head out and do some trolling. And Savage Gear is going to announce on the first of April a brand new Waterwolf camera. Finally. Finally. <laughs> really nice. Yes. Gone are the days yeah. of shitty 720p. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we both were uh, fanboys of the Waterwolf. We yeah? used it a lot. Yes. And always there was this one minor setback that it has only 720p. 720p. And a couple of other things uh, I think as well. Like you couldn't see the... Um, you know the, the battery status it was just all or nothing was on and then it switched off yeah um, yeah you know the limit in sd cards like only 32 gigs with for 720p yes it's fine but if you're like out for longer sessions yeah. you can't clear the sd card no, it's going up to 64 no 128 wow. gigabytes nice. so and if you case you're wondering how the hell do these, these guys know about these details it's because i got one of the brand new models here it's still fresh in a box, it's still sealed. I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, 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 unboxing. I'll unbox it like that. Oh, hold up. <laughs> yes. I like the packaging. It's cool. Yeah. Putting a lot of effort in it. A little pikey. Mm. Oh. It looks exactly the same. That's good, because then you'll hear previous accessories, you can use them. Perfect. Uh, that's good. So you don't have any compatibility issues with old, you know, mounts and stuff like that. And uh, and uh, the shape has proven itself to be Perfect. better than the competitors out there because you know, buddies of mine have been playing around with uh, competitors like Spydro and uh, GoFish Cam, I think. But they all had a lot of stability issues, and the Waterwolf seems to excel in stability, especially with the uh, the weight underneath the camera. And those weights are back again. Yeah. And also the caps. <laughs> the caps, yeah. Let's see what it looks like from the inside. Plop. Aha! You've got an on and off button. Yeah. But uh, it looks brighter. Than yeah, it's it did. brighter. Also, it, yes, the, the LED light is on the outside. So now when you power it on, you can actually see from the outside if it's still running. But you can also see what the status of the battery is. And it will slowly yeah. turn from green to red. Exactly. And there's a separate record button on it as well. So you can pause recording and start recording again. So when you get the camera out, you just had a take, open it up, stop the recording, start a new one. And then you will know at that end point of that recording that you probably had that fish on. So it's much easier to work with as well. And it... Uh has these new uh, .mov files. Finally, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you can finally edit with regular. We're both Apple users, and now you can finally. Because I used to edit it like you could open it in QuickTime, but then QuickTime did an update and they didn't support the old MOV files anymore. Yeah. Yes. That kind of bummed me out. So, uh, and then there was a, like a workaround where you can open it with VLC, but then you lost the audio. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And I had a workaround with some uh, sketchy Russian uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> software, yeah. which worked, but. So let's head out. Set up the trolling rod. Fishing is really, really slow. The trolling didn't produce at all. Um, but I think we're gonna head out in a bit and meet up with two of our friends and try and eat some burgers and. Uh, Make the best out of the beautiful weather and continue fishing later in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fishing too. Um, it's all about having fun and the social aspect is really important too. So uh, let's uh, grab some burgers and uh, continue fishing in the afternoon. Sorry, uh, Sean, zijn geen druipers te zeggen, de kwakjes. Pike, pike, goed man, goed man, pak. Super happy. <laughs> Look at this fat pre-spawner. I'm not gonna measure her away or just quickly unhook her and get her back. She nailed the scout jerk bait. I wasn't even paying attention. I was telling Franz that I don't even know what we're talking about, but let's get her back quickly. Let's unhook her in the water and get her back quickly. <laughs> yes! Oh, what a great fish! And the funny thing is, I wasn't even paying attention. Suddenly, the rock got whacked out of my hands. And um, yeah, the blood is mine, by the way. It's not from the fish. I hand landed the fish at my own risk. Usually, I try to use these Savage Gear Aqua Guard gloves, but I decided to hand land them straight away. So I wanted to reduce handling time. The reason why we're not netting these fish is because if they're hooked properly and during the day you can see where the hooks are, you know, you need to grab them anyway by hand if you want to unhook them. So you can grab them by the jaw and it causes less damage than putting the net, the fish into the net, especially when a fish still has trebles flying around, it gets tangled into the net and then it just increases handling time and also it damages the fish because it starts thrashing around, the hooks are just in the jaw but also in the net and then you get the fish that you know, tear themselves apart. So we do however land them during the night with a net. Two reasons, one is we fish with one treble during the night because they completely inhale the bait so usually the treble is inside and that you know is not much of an issue when the fish goes into the net and also our own safety during the night yeah you can't really see where the hooks are so you want to put the fish in the net and then take your time to inspect where the hooks are and then safely put your hand inside its jaw there is an however in this situation or in this this this, this story that i'm telling you guys is that i also understand that we are out on the water a lot and then it is easy for us to say to hand land the fish if you're not certain about what you're doing using net it's fine i'm not judging people that are using a net i'm just saying that if you do feel comfortable enough try hand landing and avoid netting fish i mean there's a lot of shitty nets out there there are a lot of good nets out there but still in my opinion i think Franz agrees with me as well hand landing is the gateway the way to go it's much better for the fish we also let it support in the water often we unhook it in the water in this case we just lifted it out of the water got a couple of photos unhooked it in the water and released it straight away um got it on the scout jerkbait this is has become a favorite of mine two obika case underneath it fished it on a scout swim bait rod this is a two meter and 21 centimeter long rod with a casting weight up to 130 gram combined with a savage gear sg10 
250 bed caster. Really light combo, but super fun to use during this uh, warm spring conditions. Because as you can see, I'm fishing in a t-shirt France as well. <laughs> Next week I'll be fishing in minus four. So that is quite the difference. So I will need to uh, adapt and uh, acclimatisere. I don't know what the English word for that is, but uh, yeah. Let's try and get another one, buddy. Zo, daar ging een snoek. Twee snoeken. Twee stuks. Twee stuks. Ja, twee dikke snoeken ook. Finally, some wind. We had like zero wind all morning. We saw a couple of fish, most of them following few that uh, yeah, tapped the lure and then uh, went straight home. <laughs> Going to the spot where we started off in the morning to see if the wind made a difference in the fish. So we are prepping for some zander fishing. I'm using one of the slender scoop sheds in combination with a either 10 or 12 and a half gram jig head. Um, the idea is to start casting it like seven or eight meters. Maybe work our way a bit more up towards the shallows if we can see some signals over there. And hopefully we can catch some zander. It would be fun. I mean, the pike fishing wasn't super hot today, but we can get some zander on the slender scoop. I am using one of the soda rods in combination with a SG1000. We managed to get a couple of hits on the small soft baits and after that we switched to the big pelagic game with big soft baits trying to find fish on the mega life and it paid off. Wow! <laughs> was a really big head. A really big head, yeah. But she has spawned. Let's see if I can. Papa. Oh, Sean. Jesus. Gigantisch. Kijk dan waar dat ding zit. Die hoofdlamp hier. Kijk dan. Look at where the monster slug is. <laughs> no way. Look at that. <laughs> wow. It's super long, but. Clearly this is one I spawned. Wow. The hook is still nice. The monster slug is still in pretty good condition. Let's check the FC. No big rips or tears. After each fish we check it. To see if uh, we need to replace it. Of course uh, FC is nice and light to fish with. It can't handle as much beatings as steel wire. So you have to check it. But this one is uh, fine. Nice. Put the treble back in and it's ready for a new adventure. Good sandal to close off the evening. We had a uh, really good day out on the water. It's uh, the end of the season for both of us, I guess, in the Netherlands. Maybe France will do some nighttime fishing, but uh, it's my last day in the Netherlands. It has been great to be out here and uh, doing the nighttime fishing, but also the daytime fishing, even though it was super, super slow on the, uh, on the shallows. But there's always a reward lying around the corner. Cool Xander. Again, we're not gonna eat it, so we're gonna put it back. But, Well, Franz and I will see you in the next video. This guy is gonna go back, so bye-bye. <laughs>